<laughs> what is going on everybody welcome back to the channel it's time for my third movie review of the day and this one is a movie called 84 brady i checked this one out because i am a sports fan and i am a fan of comedies when they're done well and i saw the trailer i saw the concept and it's kind of inspired by a true story, not really based on the true story, but inspired by a true story of this group of older ladies who become diehard Patriots fans, huge fans of Tom Brady, and they decide to actually go to the Super Bowl. And this is about the adventures that happen while they're heading to the Super Bowl. So that's all I knew. And it sounded like it could potentially be pretty damn funny entertaining and also cute and sweet with these old ladies who love football they want to meet their hero and i assume at the end they're going to get to meet tom brady and that's going to be hopefully somewhat plausible and how that comes to be and it's going to be funny and i know that it's a comedy so some things are going to go over the top with it but hopefully it's genuinely funny i don't mind going over the top being a little unrealistic just to be funny if it's genuinely funny so that's the concept here, and that's what's going on with this movie. Also, it's got a great cast. Jane Fonda is one of the four. Sally Field is one of the four. So you got a great cast. They should be able to pull it off with a good script. This should be pretty damn funny and entertaining, right? So let's get into this movie, 80 for Brady. The four of them are watching the playoffs, and one of them is really superstitious, so everyone's got to be in the same position as the last time the Pats won, right? Everyone thinks has I knocked over the chips last time. I got to knock over the chips this time. You were on the ladder. Get on the ladder. Love that, right? The average you know, sports viewer thinking that we actually, something that we do actually has an effect on what's going to happen on the field. <laughs> so really cool, really funny, really cute. Got off to a good start, and now I'm like, okay, uh, obviously they're going to win this game. The Patriots are going to win this game. And that's going to send them to the Super Bowl. They kind of talked about how they'd like to go, but they can't afford it. They don't have the money. So they enter this contest for four tickets to the Super Bowl. And okay, plausible enough. They're going to win, I assume. Okay. And they're going to head to the Super Bowl. And then all this stuff is going to happen. Who knows what's going to happen with these four old ladies. And that's basically what happens Except there's two problems, and this is kind of my biggest fear going into this movie. Number one, the things that happen are so outlandish, so improbable or straight up impossible. And I'm going to give some examples of things that happened, and I'll tell you when I'm going to get into those. They're not really spoilers, but take them as, I guess they are. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you some things that happened straight up. So I, I don't recommend this movie, so... Um, I'll let you know when I'm going to get into some of those details. The things that happen during this journey to the Super Bowl are so ridiculous, so unrealistic that unless it's just hilarious, it's just going to take me out of the movie and I'm not going to appreciate it. And unfortunately, it wasn't hilarious. Nothing that happened was very funny. It just wasn't funny. I didn't laugh. And I'm like, this is so stupid. This is so dumb. I mean, this is inspired by a true story, but I know this didn't really happen because this is just stupid. This didn't happen. This didn't happen. That didn't happen. That didn't happen. Didn't, what happened? I, I mean, you just took the basic idea that four old ladies went to the Super Bowl and tried to make a movie out of it. I guess that's fine. But you went so in the left field to make it just so unrealistic. And then it just wasn't funny. You're just trying to do like physical comedy all the time. Just, you know, yeah, it, it is kind of, I can see how it'd be funny to put old ladies like this in a situation with young people like at a party or something and they don't really know how to talk and stuff. And they, they're, I guess, and um, there, okay, there's a few funny lines, like you have Sally Field with her little purse, and it's kind of cute, and she's like, this is my strap-on, and a younger lady, like a younger girl who was at the, at the restaurant where she said that, I think she was a server, or she worked there, she kind of gave the second glance, like, what did she say? <laughs> she, this is my strap-on, okay, it's a strap-on, and one of the older, older ladies is like, I don't think that's the term you want to use, no, this is my strap-on. Okay, I think that was even in the trailer. The trailer probably used the funnier lines. So that was pretty funny. But um, And that's the kind of moments they should have pretty pretty much stuck to. They went way over the top with other things. So now I'm going to start talking about some of those things that happened in this movie. I just have to point out a few scenes that are so ridiculous, so insane, so unlikely or impossible. that, And they weren't even funny that I just kind of checked out. One that really pissed me off is when they need to get into the game. 
because they lost their tickets. Now that's a scenario totally reasonable, totally could happen. And I kind of like how, how that worked out because they gave the tickets to the most, the most trustworthy of the four. Who's the person we could trust the most? Obviously, Sally Field. She put it in her strap-on, right? She put the tickets in her little strap-on purse and she misplaced the purse. She left the purse somewhere. Oh my goodness, they lost the tickets. They need to get into this game. They happen to run into somebody going into the game who they met the night before at a party. And this guy's kind of like the DJ. And they say, hey, hey, can you get us into the game? He's like, follow me, ladies. So far, so good, right? Maybe he can get him into the game. I'm not even saying this is implausible. It's, it's not very likely, but hey, maybe you see someone you just met the night before who maybe has a hookup, can get you into the game. Okay, but here's what the, here's the problem. He tries to get them through security. He's got his dancers, his official little, you know, young girls who are not, not like really young, but like 20 or 20 something year old girls who are his dancers. They get into the into the stadium and the uh, security is like, hey, who are these four old ladies? These aren't part of your crew. And he's like, yeah, these are my dancers. Uh, and then they want them to prove it. These ain't your dancers. Oh yeah, watch this. And everyone goes into a dance, a synchronized dance. The old ladies, the young dancers, and this guy all in unison dance, synchronized. Where the hell? How did they learn the, the moves to the dance? This is stupid. This is not realistic. This did not happen. And what's funny about it? It's supposed to be funny watching Sally Field dance and kick and do their moves. It's just, I don't know if it's supposed to be funny or something. It just looks ridiculous because this can't. This is not realistic. This can't happen. How do they know the moves? How do they know the dance? All four of them know the dance moves and the, and the, and the younger girls are also doing the same moves. Stupid, ridiculous, dumb. Once they get into the game, there's another security guy who sees them on the big screen, which shows them for an abnormally long amount of time doing things, shaking their ass, doing weird things. It was stupid. And I know you can possibly get on that big screen on the uh, scoreboard. Fans are shown on the scoreboard, but they showed them for a long, long period of time. It was a little bit unrealistic, but okay. So here comes the security guy to kick them out because he, he's they're the ones that couldn't get through him earlier when they tried to get in. And so he's trying to kick them out. And now they run into someone else that they also happen to meet the guy before who's a former NFL player. And he has a connection too. And he loves these old ladies enough to bring them up into, you know, the, the box seats. So now they got this great view in the box seats. All this is pretty unrealistic, pretty unlikely, but I'm okay. I'm, I'm on board, I guess. I, it's, it's possible, just, just barely feasible enough, I guess, until the team is struggling this really happened in the Super Bowl. The Patriots were struggling. And one of the old ladies says, I'm going to do something about it. She walks over and walks into the coach's room where they have the headphones and they're putting the plays down. She walks into there. All four of them walk into there and pretty much take over for the coaches. Are you freaking kidding me? Um, and the coaches actually let them take over. They're like, no, don't do that play. Do this play. Do that play. I don't know the terminology. I think the guy, I think the guy in that room was actually a coach uh, for the Patriots. He's the, he's the coach that does the calls. I forgot his name, but he's the coach that does the calls. I mean, this is so stupid. These old ladies did not walk into the coach's room and actually win the Super Bowl for the Patriots. One of them actually takes the headset and starts talking to Tom Brady and gives him a motivational speech. You really got to suspend some disbelief to get through this movie. I'm telling you straight up, like that was extreme um, to actually think that that could happen. Obviously, they would have been kicked. Nobody would do this. Like nobody in their right mind would do this. And if you say, okay, this old lady is actually crazy enough. These ladies are crazy enough to try to walk in there. They would have gotten kicked out immediately, probably put in handcuffs. Who knows? But um, yeah. And then later after the Patriots came back and won, it looked like they were going to get arrested. Um, and when I was like, I've never been to jail and they looked like they were taking them to jail, but they weren't, of course, knew they weren't. They took them to the locker room to meet the players. One of them started massaging one of the players' beards. I actually laughed at that because at this point in time, I'm just completely checked out. This thing is just stupid. But the funny thing is when one of the ladies meets, only one of them meets Tom Brady, at least, I'm sure they all supposedly would have in that moment, but they didn't show us anyone else. But one of the ladies met Tom Brady, the one that talked to him through the headset. And it was like they knew each other right off the bat. They did, It wasn't like an exciting moment or anything. Like, oh my God, Tom Brady was like, hey. She's like, hey, hi, hey, Tom. 
what the fuck? I thought there'd be a little more excitement there and actually meeting Tom Brady. They are meeting Tom Brady. This is the moment. It was so underwhelming. It was like, damn, all this for that? I mean, they they they, they like they just knew each other. Maybe that was purposely on the script because they had some kind of a connection when they talked. I don't get it. But anyway, this whole thing was just not, it wasn't, I mean, even they weren't even for just random fans. One of them actually had written a book that was selling at the Pats, um, at the Patriots, you know, team store. And then she like read the book and she was pretty famous. She was signing autographs. Like what? One of the, I thought they were just for like random old ladies, you know, who are Patriots, Patriots fans. I mean, this was just, it was kind of, it's just all over the place. And the things that were happening, the people they were meeting, um, it's just straight up Forrest Gump, right? You just, you're there and, and you're, you're the reason that they won the Super Bowl. You're there for all these big, important events. You're meeting all these big, important people. Funny enough, you know, Forrest Gump's mom is in the movie with Sally Field. So this is basically Forrest Gump too, but it's, you know, Mama Gump and her story as a football fan. I mean, it's, it's just, except for, except for two things. Forrest Gump was actually funny and super entertaining. And even though I love this concept where, you know, Forrest Gump is involved in all these big things, actually they make it plausible. As unlikely as it is, it's plausible. Forrest Gump wasn't breaking into, you know, it, 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 he was involved in Watergate because he saw activity over there and he called the de front desk. He's like, there's some people that are bo that bother me, keeping me up at night. They got flashlight. I don't remember what he said, but remember he called and he kind of was just saying that they're making noises over there and that's how they somehow that's how um, Watergate got found out and got started. I don't remember exactly what happened in the movie, but you, you know, everything that Forrest Gump did to get involved in this was just happenstance. It, it, it was just coincidence and it was very funny and very well done. This movie though, absolutely impossible, the things that happened. And there's just a few examples. Yeah, they were at this uh, party with young people, the things that were happening there were ridiculous. And, and not just the four, everyone was acting, even players were acting stupid. Everyone they met was acting just ridiculous in this movie. The whole thing was just not very funny. And I just, I, I'm not to go on a big rant, didn't like this movie, as you can see. And I would have to say, unfortunately, this would be a hard pass for me. And I would not suggest it for anyone else either in the future. I'll never watch this movie again. Um, just not my thing. I'm not going to say it's trash. There was some cute moments. And I, at the beginning, you know, I even felt a little bit like, 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 uh, you know, emotionally, like I, it was so cool that these this this these four friends here, these old ladies, you know, um, are friends and they're huge football fans. They want to go to the the Super Bowl, and and it got off to a decent start. But after things got wild, it just got just out of control. Almost nothing that happened could really happen. Almost nothing. So uh, I have to say a hard pass for this one. Unfortunately, Brady, eighty for Brady. I mean, eighty for Brady. Just avoid it. If you haven't seen it already, I wouldn't recommend it. Unless this is your thing. You like absolutely ridiculous comedy that could never actually happen. And you, you know, I, I, old ladies might enjoy it. If you're over 65, you and you, if you're an old lady that loves football, you got to check this out. Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's a given. But for most people, I would say just avoid this one. Let me know what you guys think if you've seen 80 for Brady. You have a great day. Hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe, and we'll talk to you next time.